Hey guys, this is Clouds. So the fall update has finally been released, and today I'm going to be going over what I think are the most important changes in the patch notes. So let's get into it. First up, weapon changes. Regarding the LMGs, the low weight LMGs now all have bipods available, and all low weight LMGs gain accuracy faster when firing. LMGs have had their aim down sight spread buffed when stationary, and their aim down sight spread nerfed when moving. Fair enough. Regarding individual changes to LMGs, the bar has had its horizontal recoil increased. I'm not really a fan of this nerf. I mean, in my opinion, the bar, it was totally balanced. It was sort of like the most preferred LMG, but I think that was less the bar being overpowered and more the bar is just sort of like the least shitty of the LMGs, so I'm not a huge fan of this nerf, but it's only a horizontal recoil nerf, so it's not huge. For the Lewis gun and the Huat, I don't know how to say that, I'm gonna hope that's right, the Huat, both of these LMGs have had their first shot recoil multiplier lowered, so I mean, any, any love that those guns get is very appreciated because they were not that good. And I played pretty much exclusively with the Lewis gun this morning, and it seems decent. So, for the, for the LMG buffs, I suppose the Lewis gun is fairly decent. It still doesn't really blow me away, and in my opinion, I, I still feel like the support guns are sort of like the worst guns because... I mean, yeah, if you're shooting at a medic in the back or the side, you're probably going to win that engagement, but if it's heads up, a lot of times I still find that the medic's SLRs will beat my LMG, so I don't know. LMGs are they're decent now, but they're still not that great. The Hell Regal has had its horizontal recoil nerfed. It's just a slight increase but now it overheats slightly slower, so get a little bit of a buff and a nerf there. The Slope Slaughter 1906 has a small buff. Its horizontal recoil has been changed from 0.2 to 0.1, so that's a small buff, but I'll be honest, even with this small buff, this gun is not very viable. I haven't ever used it, but considering its damage and its magazine size of five rounds, I still don't see why anyone would use this gun. The Auto Loading 8.25 Extended Magazine has had a little bit of a buff. It's had a reload buff. The Tactical Reload has been decreased from 2.6 seconds to 2.1 seconds, and an Empty Reload has been changed from 3.2 seconds to 2.6. So, eh. Decent buff, I suppose. There has also been a change to the Russian 1895 infantry and sniper variants. Its rate of fire has been decreased from 64 rounds per minute to 56. Regarding shotguns, the buckshot has been changed so it is more consistent and basically what that entails is buckshot now has 1.0 multipliers across all body parts, legs, arms, head, so that should make it more consistent when you use it. They have also reduced the effect of customized recoil direction and made it scale correctly when you have a bipod deployed. So if you don't know, you can change the recoil direction for some weapons, not all. It comes standard on a centered horizontal recoil. But you can change it so it slightly goes to the left or slightly goes to the right. And now they've changed it so if you do choose to make it go left or right, it's not going to be as drastic of a change. Okay, on to gadgets. First up, limpet mines. These are now invulnerable, which is pretty neat. The reason they did this is if you put a limpet mine on something, a teammate could blow it up and essentially steal your kill. 
but now the limpet mine only blows up after a certain amount of time so fair enough good change i'd say you can now carry two instead of one of the incinerary and gas tripwire mines so i don't know i don't really i guess you know fair enough but I, I already felt like the incinerary tripwire mine, at least, was already pretty good, so now that you can carry two, that's gonna be my clear favorite. The rifle grenades for the medic class have had a slight nerf. They will now take slightly longer to explode after you fire them. In addition to that, the HE grenade has a slightly smaller blast radius. Alright, now onto mortars, and this is the biggest gadget change. They've made mortars much, well they, not worse I would say, but they're a much slower weapon to use. When you first deploy it, you are very inaccurate, you're gonna see, and as you, as you wait, it gets tighter and tighter until it is at its maximum accuracy. And then after you fire a round, you have to wait a little bit longer to let it get a bit more accurate. This is to encourage people who want to make accurate mortar shots to have to play slower and if you spam the mortar you're going to have very inaccurate shots going all over the place. In addition to that, air burst now has less range than it used to. You can also now shoot smoke with the mortar, so as you soften up the enemy you can also confuse them with smoke. In my opinion this is a fair change, I feel like the mortars were sort of a overly easy gadget to use. Definitely better than the LMGs, I would say. So, I like where the, where the mortars are at right now. Now onto bug fixes. There's a lot of things that aren't really worth mentioning, in my opinion. But the one noticeable thing worth mentioning is they have removed the delay to firing a weapon after you deploy a gadget or throw a grenade. So, that's a good change. Okay, regarding ricochet shots. I'm sure some of you have noticed that when you shoot a ground vehicle with some type of cannon, you won't do any damage, and that's because some shots just ricochet off the armor. The game, it didn't do a very good job of letting you know that your shot ricocheted, and to help players know that their shots ricochet, it will now be more easily seen, and there's also going to be a sound indicator to let you know, okay, that shot ricocheted off the armor. Right, so now onto vehicle and stationary changes. The fortress gun has gotten a buff. It now deals higher damage against vehicles, and it has a larger lethal area against infantry. Fair enough. I never really felt like the fortress gun was underpowered, but if they want to buff it, well, fair enough. Okay. The AA gun. A lot of people have been asking for, for these AA guns to be nerfed. And here's what they did. They decreased the AA cannon's damage against planes and plane parts. And they have also reduced the AA truck's range. Now I haven't used the AA truck ever. So I can't attest to how good it used to be. Or what it's like after this nerf. But in my experience my short experience with the AA guns after the patch, they're still fairly usable. And as far as I can tell, if you're shooting at a, you know, mediocre pilot, you're probably still going to kill them. But if, if you're up against a pilot who knows what they're doing, they're going to kill you very quickly. So, I don't know, I mean it's a tough, I feel like this doesn't really change anything because the bad and you know mediocre slash decent pilots they're still going to get killed by AA guns but the really good pilots that you need to get out of the sky it's unlikely that you're gonna kill them because they know to fly away and then they know where the AA gun they see where it's firing from and then they can kill you very quickly so I don't know I do like the reduced AA truck range I'd say that's a good nerf, but changing the damage for the AA cannon, I don't know how much of an effect this is going to do, except make good pilots even more effective. Okay, since we talked about AA, let's talk about A. 
um, air vehicles. Alright, so changes to the planes. Increased damage and radius of the Raken darts. They've also reduced damage taken from scout rifles, but they've increased the damage taken from K bullets. So now if a scout wants to engage a plane, they have to use the K bullets to be effective. The 50 kilogram bombs now deal a little bit of damage to planes and tanks when you hit them with a direct hit. They've also increased the bomber killer bullet velocity. This is to make this package better at dogfighting. They have also improved the bomber's torpedoes so that they can be used against the land targets and not just boats. Alright, on to the cavalry soldier. The cavalry soldier now takes less damage from a headshot. As if the cavalry soldier was not already strong enough. I don't know. I guess that's fair. Not really, but... They've also increased the range that AT grenades can be thrown from horseback. So if you want to engage tanks, like a madman, you can do that. They've also increased the damage hand grenades do to transport vehicles. So if you find yourself in a tricky spot, even if you don't have the light anti-vehicle grenade, if you just have any gr hand grenades, throw it. because because now it will do slightly more damage. They have changed the armored artillery truck so that it does more damage up close and less damage at a distance. If you are using mines deployed from a vehicle, you can now deploy up to six instead of three. So that's a, that's a cool change. And the last vehicle change, the train on Suez it now has a heavy mortar on the front turret instead of the 57mm AT gun. Alright, speaking of Suez, it's got a few changes. It is now a 5 flag layout on Conquest instead of just a 3. They have also added a transport vehicle to the main base of each team. So it is easier to escape a spawn trap situation. And the two flags centered in the city urban areas have had their capture radius reduced. So when you want to get those flags, you don't have to look through so many buildings. I would say overall the changes to Suez are definitely good. I think it's a much better conquest map now. It still is a bit linear, but I mean, there's nothing they can do about that now. When they designed Suez it's it's linear on every game mode well except for like the team deathmatch game modes that are centered in one little urban area but yeah it is a linear but it's no longer as clustered I guess you could say so good changes to Suez I would say good changes all right on to more game mode changes there have been a few changes to operations They've now made it so killing a retreater gives you three tickets instead of two. And they have slightly reduced the time to capture a flag. They've also increased the amount of tickets you get. For 40 player operations, you get 200 tickets instead of 150. And for 64 player operation, you get 250 tickets instead of 150. For 64 player operation, they have also increased the minimum amount of tickets you get for capturing a sector to 50 tickets instead of 30. The rationale behind these changes is that overall it was more difficult for the attackers on operations and with the decreased time to capture flags and more tickets, it should be a little more fair, a little more balanced. So good changes overall I'd say for operations. Okay, here's a small change for the rush game mode. There will now be equal weather events for both rounds of attacking and defending on the same map. I'm not sure exactly how this is going to play out because I didn't get any rush gameplay today. But it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. So, regarding squad orders, they have finally changed it so squad leader demotion is in Battlefield 1. 
This is similar to the system in Battlefield 4 where if a squad member requests an order and the squad leader does not give an order, after 60 seconds the first person who requested an order will be made the squad leader. This is a great change. I'm really glad they brought this to the game. I just think it's weird that this wasn't in the game at launch. You can also now quit between rounds. But in my experience, this doesn't really work because there's such a delay when you quit in between a round, you might as well just have not done it. I don't know if this is only for PS4, it might be different for PC, but so far in my experience, this change has not worked as intended. So. So it'll be interesting to see if they work on this, or if this is only like a temporary bug. I don't know. You can also now edit your soldier loadout in the main menu. This was actually something that was in Battlefield 3 for the console back in 2011. It wasn't in Battlefield 4, wasn't in Battlefield 1 on release, but now it's in Battlefield 1, so that's pretty good. My only criticism of this is that you cannot edit your vehicle loadouts and in Battlefield 3 you could edit your vehicle loadouts in the main menu so I would like to see them change that. The ability to buy battle packs and rent a server has been implemented. At the time I checked though neither of these were available so we'll have to wait and see how long that takes. Right, so there's a lot of other stuff in these patch notes, such as they have removed the heavy machine gun on the G flag on Empire's Edge Conquest, but you know, most of the other stuff isn't that important, and these are the things that I thought were the most relevant. So overall, decent patch. We've got squad leader demotion, edit our loadouts in the main menu, Changes to operations so that attackers have a bit more of a chance to stay in the game. They've made Suez Conquest fairly good. The weapon changes they did, I guess, seemed decent. There was nothing very huge, and I do appreciate the buff they gave the LMGs, but I'm not sure how competitive they're going to be with these buffs. They still sort of feel like the worst guns in the game to me. But overall, I'm fairly satisfied with this patch, so good stuff. Right, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.